All right, this is Sergeant Refslin with the Iowa Virtual Recruiter, and we're going to be talking to uh, two outstanding young E5s uh, who've recently attended a uh, basic leader course and getting some ideas of what kind of preparation you can be doing to get ready to make sure that you are as successful as possible. We have Sergeant Terry, who is joining us from home, and we have Sergeant Knapp, who is joining us literally from basic leader course right now in, in Camp Ashland, Nebraska. Thank you very much for both joining me. And uh, let me get so, Nap. I know when you attended basic leader course, it's right now. How many? How much longer do you have? Ten days. Ten more days. All right. And Sergeant Terry, where did when did you go to basic training? I went. Uh, or excuse me, basic leader course. I went uh, March tenth, and then graduated April first. Okay, so just a couple months ago. So both very fresh as far as their experiences. Um, and I'd like to just get some ideas of, of what were your expectations going into the course and, and what changed when you, when you got there? We'll go with uh, Sergeant Knapp first. Uh, well, I was not prepared at all because I got a one week heads up, but it's not as crazy as I was expecting it to. It's pretty stressful at the beginning, but it's still really relaxed. Like we get done like five o'clock every day. Like we're completely released for the day. There's no no one in charge of us. We're just in charge of ourselves. Do whatever. Pretty easy. Yeah. Are is there is there a lot of homework assignments or things you guys prepare for in the evenings, or or do you pretty much just hang out and do whatever you want? So right now. Once I'm done with this, I'll have to work on my um, public speaking brief because that's on Thursday, so end of the week. But that's probably the longest break we have in between assignments. So was the expectation that you were going to be, you know, doing stuff until lights out and, and that's what was that, different? That I think it was going to be like basic, like everyone on you 24 7. Like, one time, like they tell you when to go to the bathroom, they tell you when to walk, they tell you everything, but it's it's student led here. So, all right, Sergeant Terry, what was, what was your expectations prior to going and how were they changed when you got there? I thought it was going to be a lot more stressful. Everyone that I asked about BLC did everything online because of COVID, so it was kind of hard to try and get an experience expectation for how it's supposed to be but everyone that went you know five years ago it seemed a little bit more stressful but then once I got there um, the first day they kind of acted like drill sergeants at Fort McCoy and it was kind of a surprise but after that it was student-led so um, really the only thing that was stressful was the the load of assignments and how quickly like you run through different assessments and how little time you really do have to prepare so I don't feel like I was prepared at all, really. So it, I felt like I was starting from like step one instead of other people. I was, they were a little bit ahead of me on certain things like PRT and DNC. But other than that, once that like first week went by, then it was a lot more calm. So what, what kind of assessments was it that you, that you didn't feel prepared for that it seemed like other people had a heads up on? The main one was PRT and DNC, and then the public speaking brief. Just because I don't like public speaking, but PRT. I think I think I have two people that are both uncomfortable with public speaking. No, no, no. It. I haven't done the public speaking, but mine. It's just in front of my class, and so that's like sixteen people, and I feel pretty comfortable in front of them. So, I think I'll, I have. I think I'll be okay, but I might freeze. Who knows? Yeah. And I think one of the things that you mentioned before you left was that you were concerned about the the PRT. Is that is that near the beginning or is yeah. that? PRT and DNC are at the beginning and that our instructors said once you pass those that you should be good because that's where they lose a lot of people. We had one person from my squad go home because he didn't pass DNC. You have one chance and then if then you'll have another chance. You can only it's like the ACFT. If you do like an alternate event, you can only get the minimum. So you get two chances and then you're gone. Like he was gone the next day. It's very fast. Okay, so let's let's just let's just hit on a, a quick timeline. So 
the first thing that you do when you get there is, I'm guessing, was it APFT or was it ACFT? We didn't take any. We, we didn't did, have to take We did the ACFT just so they could get numbers. It doesn't affect if you graduate or not, but they can, like, like if you're not trying, they can dock you because you get graded on, like. Participation. Yeah, participation, but. I don't even remember here. Let me flip through my notebook real quick. So after, if you're, if you're watching this video and it is after October 1st of 2022, uh, NCOES courses like BLC are going to require that you have a passing ACFT. So if you're watching this video and it is, and the graduation date is going to be after October 1st, 2022, make sure that you are prepped and your unit has given you a uh, test to make sure that you're ready to go. Same thing with height and weight. I'm guessing that is something though that yeah. people were. You, if you if you don't pass the on day zero, then you have to retest on day fifteen. Oh really? So if they you, do give you a chance to retest. Yeah, on day fifteen. But if you don't pass, then you're done. So in Fort McCoy, we did day zero. People would do height and weight, and then they would wait until I think it was like day twenty. And so just a couple of days before we left. And so there were, I think, three people that failed. So they spent all that time at BLC and they passed everything. And just because they failed height and weight the second time, they couldn't graduate and get promoted. So make sure um, you're for that. <laughs> yeah, because your unit is going to be upset that they spent that money. And usually that's the responsibility of the unit to make sure that if people are going, that, that they have, yeah. that they're at the point that they need to be before they go. Yeah. Um, so, Sergeant Jerry, what was what's the first couple of, uh, assessments that you have? Like, what's what's it like when you first get to McCoy? Was was it was somebody there to be able? Because you know, this is the this is the I just had this going down to to um, to Little Rock, and it's like, where do I check in? What it's is there somebody that kind of walks you through the process once you get down once you get there? Yeah. So once I showed up. Like you could see there's there's a line of uh, soldiers into the like in processing part and they had like stations that you would go through. So it was like supply S1. Um, so you'd fill out all your paperwork and then you'd get your uh, your room keys. So we weren't in a bay. We had our own like two two person rooms that were really nice in McCoy. So we'd get like our room key and then the key card that would open the door to the building. And then after that, we just we're left to do our own thing like the whole day. So if we got, I got there early, so it was like one in the afternoon. So the whole rest of the day we had like our own time. And then the next day it was like a 5.30 wake up in formation and we just started uh, school, so. Is Ashlyn the same way? No, so Ashlyn's super small. <laughs> so like we came in and they know automatically, they can tell if you're here for BLC and they just like, okay, go that way. And uh, my uh, welcome packet was very clear. So it said 509 report there. So we went in, got like our paperwork like out that we needed, like all the one, all the forms that we had to turn into them, sign in, wait in the classroom, get a quick brief, get bedding stuff from their supply, go back to the barracks. It was super smooth. And I, I rode up with two other people. So that was a lot like but more relaxing too. Nice. And is it bays there or is it, or is it yeah. room with? So we have one building, it's females and there's four bays of us, but there, I think there's two, another class. And then there's three more buildings that are male barracks right next to us. Okay. So it's, it's barracks living as opposed to in individual or in two person rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's like 20 people in my bay, I think. Okay. Um, well, there's some advantages and disadvantages of that. The more cut off you are from other people, the less sometimes information flow there is, but that still works. So, Sergeant Jerry, what was the first assessment that happened? Uh, PRT and then DNC, like the day after, I think it was. And how'd that go for you? You said it, you were concerned about it. Yes, it was very stressful because I never do that in my unit. And so it was basically like relearning it because it's been almost four years since I did PRT and uh, basic and AIT. So um, yeah, once I got there, they gave us like a list of the ones that we were assigned to do and 
uh, perform. And I had to basically remember from like start remembering from scratch. Uh, I had watched like a whole bunch of videos that Fort McCoy put out. I was up till like nine, ten o'clock at night every night, like just doing it in my room over and over and over again. Um, we had, I think, two or three days of practice, like with our actual groups that we would do it with. But then, like after after the normal day, they would give us, you know, time to do whatever we wanted. So you could get together with your groups outside and practice on your own time. But I just didn't have that ability because my group they didn't want to practice with me. So it was a little stressful. And then the um, the way that we were assessed, we were all put into the grad hall <laughs> and because it was cold outside. And so there was like 10 other people getting assessed and I had a group of three people. Everyone had like four people total in their groups. I had a group of three people. So all these people got shoved into one room to assess. And so like it was very loud and like I'm the kind of person where I need it completely silent for me to like recall everything. So it was very stressful, but I think... <laughs> If you don't try and you really just, you know, are lazy about it, then you would fail. But I think it's pretty hard for them to fail you unless unless you really mess up on it. But it wasn't something well, staying, that I staying up until staying up until 10, 8, 10 p.m. trying to <laughs> study for it really can help. What would have been the best way to prepare if like somebody was going and you're like, hey, you should definitely prepare this. Like, how would you want them to prepare? I would definitely. So. Like my unit doesn't do any PRT and I would love to, for someone in my unit that just got out of BLC, even if that was online, to just sit down with me like an hour or so after drill weekends and just show me how to do it because it's kind of hard going off of like old videos because no, none of the new ones are up to date with the new regulation that came out, I think a couple months ago. And um so you really just have to like do a lot of reading and stuff. So I would have really loved if someone just sat down with me and taught me how to do it. Like the cadences and the hand, how your hands are supposed to face, like all the small details of PRT that would have made a big difference. Right. And there's supposed to be master fitness trainers in most of the units. That would be probably the ideal person to, to get with on that. How'd it go for you, Sergeant Knapp? Uh, I did not study as much as Sergeant Terry. <laughs> But uh, it, it she was, studied while she was there. You didn't even yeah. know that you were going until a couple of days before you left. Yeah. Uh, so DNC, I was extremely nervous. I thought it was just going to be like forward march, like commands like that. But like you have to inspect your squad. And I'm like, I've never done this, like even at basic. So I literally was learning it for the first time. But I passed first time, first try. But it was very stressful. And then P PRT, PT, um, what messed me up most is a bunch of the active duty people that are here. The, there's certain phrases they'll say change positions, like with an S. I wasn't used to that, but they are saying that. And that got me docked because I got used to saying it because I practice with some of the active duty people. And it's just little things like that. that it's verbiage and hand placement that people get docked on most for PT. Yeah, I mean, active duty does PRT and, and marching more often than the National Guard because we don't like to practice stupid. Um, but the so there's definitely some advantage that they have in being able to see it. But you're saying that there's also disadvantages because they have bad habits instead of just going based off of the regulation. Like you were saying, Sergeant Terry is looking over. Here's the actual standards and practicing that as opposed to practicing what you already know. Yeah. Um, what's next? So after we've gotten past PRT and we've gotten past DNC. Then it's the sharp essay. And what is that? <laughs> uh, like, do I have to explain what sharp is? You don't have to explain what sharp is, but you do have to explain that I went to PLDC back in so, 2000. I'm flipping through my notebook because I don't even know what's going on there. Did you have to do a sharp essay? Yes. Sorry, sorry. Yep. I think it was really easy. Um, mm -hmm. We were given like two days to, or uh, more, probably more than that, two, three, four days. I don't know. Um, I'm a good writer, so that's something that I wasn't too worried about. 
um, it is a little different from college writing and army writing. They have a whole different like view and format, obviously. So that was a little bit hard to work with, but then, um, so you just had to meet really like the word count or page number requirement. I can't really remember. And, um, we sent it in, it wasn't graded. Ours wasn't because it was the first essay. And so, um, they gave us feedback. They still graded it, but it didn't count towards like our graduation credits. They gave us feedback, so then we knew what to do better on the upcoming essays that were uh, like assessed. But I think it was pretty easy. And then uh, whoever got the best essay got sent to the commandant, I think. So I don't know what they did with that. It wasn't me, but I don't know. <laughs> do you have the same experience, Nat? Uh, so our, our sharp essay was graded, and I was freaking out about every writing assignment because I wasn't a good high school student. I went to college for not even a semester and dropped out. I've been getting 90 and above on the essays. So if anyone is nervous about writing, don't be. Just put in the effort. Actually, just look put the at words them. on the paper. Yeah, but and, I, and I'm sure there's I'm sure there's online resources though too where you can just download it off the internet and yeah, uh, and turn it in as your own. A minimum of two resources on every paper we write. Yeah, so I used a lot of regulations, so I would like cite the regulation. I'm a 42 alpha human resource, so like I know how to control F through regulations, but I would just say like, as this regulation states, and then I would copy and paste like a whole paragraph in the regulation. Yep. That would Good to go. Wouldn't get now, what if, you just, what if you just grab something off the internet that somebody else gave to you? Are there uh, any you controls there? If they find that, they said like, if it's obvious, no warning. You're just done. You're out of BLC. Yeah, yeah we had uh, individuals that were that when, when I was in SQI4 for recruiter school, um, individuals going on to the Facebook guard recruiting forum and asking people for uh, the, you know, the writing assignment that we had, if anybody had something that they could copy off and <laughs> they got booted for that. Turns out that there's other people that are also on the internets that might be your instructors that are watching for that stuff yeah. too. So yeah. do your own stuff, except for, yeah, here's the three paragraphs of the regulation that I'm going to uh, mm -hmm. copy and paste with a, with a, um, a reference to it and it's half done. Yep. Um, what, what other kind, any other testing that happened in this so, time period? I still have CIT which is um, conduct individual training. So I will teach other members of my class, like a specific, you get to choose what you're gonna teach them. It mostly goes to land nav, because we don't have a land nav course, but you have to teach them how to do a specific thing. So I chose um, measuring distance on a map. So I'll have to demonstrate, show, like teaching them how to measure it. And I'll just be graded on how I train them, not how they participate, which that's another nice thing about DNC and PRT, they can, the people you're like working with can be all messed up, but they're just grading you. So on your ability to actually yeah. execute your piece of it. What did you have for a class, Terry? What did you pick? Do you remember? She frozen. Did we lose her? She moved. Oh, no. Oh, is she coming back? All right, we'll remove her for right now until we find out that she comes back. All right, so. Well, the hard part is that without her, we don't know what happens in the last part of BLC. Yeah. No, they give us a very, like, we're on Blackboard, and they give us an extremely detailed like module one through four it's very detailed like i wrote down all the, the classes i have left because it started with all right she's back i'm back i'm sorry i don't know what happened <laughs> it's all right it's, it's the internet who knows what could happen what were you saying now oh no i just like like the, it's very detailed on what classes you're gonna have what they tell like your squad leader 
and platoon leader will like send out the information of what's going to be going on the next day. So, well, she was talking about uh, the um, class instruction that she had to give. What did you, what, what did you end up picking as a topic for class instruction? I didn't get to pick because so many people just ran up there like madmen and just wrote their name down. So I got um, determine your location on a map using ground terrain association. As a 42 alpha, I never- Yes, you're that. right there. I mean, you have so much experience with it. I know, so that was a little stressful, but um, I got with a infantryman and I was just like, what the heck is this? And so he literally just sat down with me for like 10 minutes and then he went through with it and then after, after he showed me what to do, I was like, this is so easy. And so like for the next two nights, I think I just practiced a little bit and ran. We had like a whole page. It was kind of like a script. And mm -hmm. so we just kind of like added little notes in there if we wanted to say something different or like the risk assessment, they'll learn how to do. Um, but then besides, I mean, I think it was really, really easy. It, again, just like PRT and DNC, it was three people that you were training. Um, but yeah, it was really easy. That was one of my highest scoring assessments. And that was something that I've never been able to do before then. So it's not something to stress out about at all. But the, the, I think the best way to learn is by teaching, because then you learn it mm -hmm. twice and you actually commit it to memory. And yep. uh, it's interesting. So what about what are the what are the other assessments that are coming up that that have especially people go home for? Is there a it's land nav really portion? No, oh. they don't have land nav. Don't have that. Okay. I think public speaking was the most stressful besides PRT and DNC for a lot of people. I mean, you get to know everyone in your class for two weeks before you have it, but even you think you're comfortable with everybody. And then once you get up there, you have your, um, your teachers back there with clipboards and then you just it gets hit with anxiety and you're like oh my god this sucks and so for me like I could feel the heat rising on my neck and I just like blacked out once I got up there and it felt like 20 seconds long I still got a good score but I got docked for really really small things um, I didn't change a slide when I started talking about what was on that slide and then obviously uh, the, the time requirement was 8 to 12 minutes so I didn't have that because I got a topic that was the last pick topic because I wasn't going to run up to the board like I was crazy. So I got I got um, legal and the NCO leader. So it was like legal roles and authorities that the NCO has. And so that was pretty hard to research on my own because it's a lot, a lot of regulation digging. And so my whole speech, I think it was like five minutes long, which was actually a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Because when I practiced on my own, I went really, really quick. But yeah, I think that was the most stressful, but everyone passed in my class. It was something, again, where they were going to pass you unless you were just absolutely horrible at it. Right. That's what kind of preparation can somebody do for that? I mean, I, there's one. There's one thing that I'm uh, I'm I'm seeing a a pattern with, and maybe being a little bit more assertive and aggressive in going up there for a topic if you want to be able to choose something that you're a little bit more comfortable with. Yep. But then if also, you have to be comfortable and assertive enough to go up there and elbow your way through to get the topic that you want. But I also think getting the topic that I didn't want might have been better for me because I saw a lot of people that got the the easy topics like responsibility or styles of leadership, they were like two minutes long because they just ran through it and they were so comfortable with it. I had to research. I mean, we did the same topic for our speech that was our um, informative Inform another assessment. And um, I mean, I researched really, really deep for like a whole week straight. And so like I had a lot of stuff and that kind of pushed me on my comfort zone, which was good. But I think to better prepare for that, it would be really, really smart to start speak up really early in class and get used to the people around you because I'm, I'm an introvert. I don't like talking unless someone talks to me. Um, 
but really trying to get out of your comfort zone and talking to everyone in the class right away is the best way to get comfortable with speaking in front of everyone. Because then once those instructors get up there, it's a whole different type of nervousness. And at, as long as you can look at the people around you and be comfortable that they're all staring at you, then it won't be as bad. Now, have you had some stuff on that too? I, I haven't done my informative at, or my public speaking yet, but like my class, I think Wednesday, so today's Monday, I think we're on Wednesday, we're all going to go in after class and just practice our speeches to each other so we can like kind of get used to like talking to everyone like when it's all on you up in front of the room because they're very strict. They told us like if you sway at all, if you use too much hand movement, dot, dot. So... Yep, I just grabbed onto that podium for dear life and didn't. Yeah, just. Dis- and that was it. So I didn't get docked on any po- any points for that kind of stuff. But so so when I've I've taught like public speaking and and different types of things, and I think that what's so funny is if you're a af- if you're afraid of looking stupid, and you get up there and you're just incredibly nervous about looking stupid, you will look stupid. Mm-hmm. You almost have to go up there with that. Ah, screw it. You know, yep. I'm going to look like an idiot. I'm going to do something kind of, I, I, Nap, I could see you going up there and just acting goofy and stupid right right up at the front no. so that way you could get it out of the way. I, I'll just hold the podium. You'll just ride a podium? Well, we have to do eye contact too. So I think I'm just going to look over everyone's heads. Yeah, don't make direct eye contact with somebody because then you'll end up getting pulled into the tractor beam. All right. What about, is there a field problem at the end? See, I think that'd be CIT because we're going down, there's a river by us. We just go down by the river and whatever topic you got is you do that. We did it. (laughs) We did it in the classroom. You did your field problem (laughs) in the classroom? Yeah. Uh, some people would do it in the hallways, in the day rooms. I did mine in the classroom because no one else was in there. So, I mean, it was cold. It was Wisconsin in March, but, or, it, yeah, but still. <laughs> That's fair. So what kind of things did you do for a field problem indoors? Just that CIT stuff. And then other people had, like, react to contact and stuff. But other than, there was no other field stuff. We didn't even do any sort of, like, pure, actual PT so we didn't get to go outside much. We were just either in the classroom, in the chow hall, or in our rooms. Really? <laughs> nah, that it's it's a little warmer for you there, sunshine. I'm sure you're gonna be outside. No windbreak out here. It is freaking freezing. I hate it. One stayed over, and it's like I. W- we were marching one day, and I literally fell out of formation because the wind blew so hard. Ah, uh, yes. Lovely camp, Camp Ashton. All right. Anything else that uh, that we want to say in closing as far as as far as preparation for BLC? I think the did idea want, of... Did you want to hit on packing list? Yeah, let's go ahead. I mean, yeah. What are some things that, that you wish you would have brought that you... That, that weren't on the packing list or things that... Uh, that are uh, areas of note that, hey, you've got to make sure that you have these things. Terry, do you have anything? Um, I mean, on the packing list, obviously it says for me to bring like your flick and your ACH, cause that's for CIT. Other than that, uh, they didn't do a showdown and I thought they really were going to. And so I brought every single thing that it said on the packing list, obviously better to be prepared than sorry, you know? So. Right. I didn't end up needing like half of the stuff I brought Mm -hmm. because I was able to do laundry whenever I wanted. So I didn't need to bring four different uniforms and four different PT uniforms and all the attachments for my flick and a canteen and a canteen holder and all that. But I mean, looking back, it was better to be prepared. What I do wish I brought was more snacks because we weren't using the PX for, I think the first week. And so, and coming from just sitting at home to eating, you know, army food kind of messes with your stomach a little bit. So it's nice to have someone, something to snack on, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Do they allow snacks in the classroom or is it? 
Yeah, they did. As long as you had like a top on your drink or whatever, but and they had vending machines and stuff in there so you could get whatever you wanted. Is that your uh, assessment as well, Nap? Mm, I I have a lot. I I was very aggravated at the packing list. So So you got notes. So, got it. Go ahead. Oh, I <laughs> Wow. So Ashley so their P they have a PX. It's super small. It's only open Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then you don't get an off post pass until everyone passes PT and DNC. And so pack more civilians because I only packed two outfits, like sweatpants and then jeans, basically. Bring more, and then it says bring a sleeping bag, but I say screw that. Bring a personal blanket because they don't care. If anything, you can throw it in your locker while you're like when because they do bay inspections and then bring a long charger cord because I got there and all the bottom bunks were taken. So I have to hop out of bed every night and there's no ladder. It I hurt myself every day getting in and out of bed. Uh, and then so even a, like an extension cord would be a good idea. Yeah. And then a personal computer, I say if you have one, bring it because we can sign out our laptops, but they're government laptops and you know how those work. Mm -hmm. um, other than OCIE, I like the, the ACH, the Flick, kind of just pack whatever you like, like, because it says to bring silks and waffles, but I would have been fine without the silks and waffles. I like. I just wore my windbreaker most of the time, and cold weather gear. Yeah, it's it just depends. It's gonna like, be just depending really on when go you go. Off. Yeah, and I then waffles the whole entire time. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just kind of where and when, but yeah. So public speaking is off your informative essay. You're graded on character and accountability. And then you your dress blues, the only time you need them is for your public speaking. Other than that, they don't care. And like if there's any creases, they care on that. But yeah. So maybe bringing a, uh, a steamer would be a good idea for getting in good with your. Well, I got to wear my uniform, so. Yeah, I didn't wear my dress blues for my public speaking. No one did. It wasn't even on the packing list to bring them. So I think it just depends on where. <laughs> so bring it if it's on the packing list and be prepared to not have to use it. Make yeah. sure it's in. They're not going to check over your uh, your records to make sure that you have the things on your uniform that yeah. you have to have on, but they're going to make sure that it's. Yeah, they'll do bay inspections, make sure, like, the bay's clean, but, like, everything's in your locker locked up. They don't care what's in there. That was the same for us. They would, I think they came in and did room inspections two or three times, and they wouldn't let us know, but, like, every day I just put everything in my locker and then made my bed, and it looked, I still had stuff, like, out on my desk, but as long as it wasn't, like, my personal laptop and medicine, then they didn't care, as long as it was nice and neat. What uh, let's just what things got got people sent home for each of you? So far, I, oh, you you can go Terry. I was gonna say height and weight, and then PRT mainly. Yeah, so making, far making mistakes with the PRT, like not not knowing what they were doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or I'd say we have a couple people that I don't think are going to pass the second round of height weight. So that, and then, um, DNC, I don't know anyone that got sent home for PRT, but then we have someone that's about to probably get kicked for, um, character and accountability. Cause they didn't follow their so sharp th essay. No, what, no, no. Th this person like, EO complaints, sharp complaints, and we're only we're we're only here for like a month, and we have ten days left, and there's already complaints about that said person. And are they very, guard or act, are they guard or active duty? Active duty, thirty two, and they only sent him here because 
he was like the last one that like it's at some point you have to send him. <laughs> There's a girl, her husband, his unit, and he's a dirtbag, like according to her husband. So All they, right. for McCoy, they measure your attribute attributes and competencies throughout your whole entire time there. So I think it was like every week we would get sat down with the instructor and go over, I can't remember the scoring, but it was like 18 to 24, like your character and accountability and all that. So like, if you show up late to formation, you know, that score will drop and then you have to like sign it. So they're always watching you. Um, within the first week and a half, they like told me I needed to work on my confidence because I'm, I'm an introvert. And so they made me a platoon sergeant, which sucked for me. But it helped it helped a lot and it had my ads and comps raise towards the end. So um Yeah, do they they're watching So they assign so they assign certain leadership or student leadership roles to be assessed at too throughout the Yeah, there was only course. platoon sergeant, so it's not like everyone will get them. Um I think it was just people they felt like targeting that were shy. So I got that. But and then there's it was uh, hazing. It's nothing but hazing. Yeah, there's uh, the for squad leaders and team leaders and the first sergeant, it was just kind of who got there first, it got like shoved in the position, but then everyone in every platoon and squad like has to be a uh, squad leader for two days. So I'm actually squad leader today and tomorrow. And then I just, there's a backpack, you just hand it off. And then I think it's, I wanna say it's every week they change platoon leader. I don't know. We we've had two so far. Okay. All right. Um, what about if you're looking to get like competence list? What do you have to you have to score what over ninety percent in the assessments, and then mm -hmm. I'm guessing that later it'll be also ACFT scores that will come into consideration. Yep. So total for graduation, I think, was 460, and then Commandant's List is 480. Or no, it was 420 and then 480 for Commandant's List. Um, as long as you don't get any negative counselings, then you'll be good, because if you get one negative counselling, and that can be uh, showing up late for formation, then you'll get automatically kicked off of it. Or height and weight, you'll get automatically kicked off. So if you show up and day zero go. as height and weight, then you're not on the Commandant's List. And and not getting a first time go is that what you said? Yeah, you have to first time go because if you aren't, then you only can get seventy points. Yeah. All right. So just as a recap, be prepared for PRT and DNC if you can get somebody from your unit that can that is a subject matter expert that can give you a heads up and make sure that you're looking over the regulation because uh, somebody just oh this is how I do it is is not going to fly when you go to uh, be assessed. So make sure that you're getting the most up to date stuff there. Um, height and weight is going to be a huge consideration. Later it'll be ACFT as well. And then make sure that you're on time and mm -hmm. you can follow the packing list. That's going to be the best course of action, but make sure that you have uh, plenty of room in your wall locker for snacks on snacks on snacks. Yeah. Yep. Any other big bullet points that you would give to anybody that's getting ready to go? No, when you're doing your papers, you need to knock them out. Like, get them done. Yeah. Because, So as soon as you get the assignment, even if they give you a couple days, get it done because you don't know what the time is. 12 hours until it was due, but it was only a 250 word minimum. But like, just get it knocked out because they'll talk to you throughout class and like, you have to do peer reviews and they'll go over it and we throw it through Grammarly, make sure nothing's um, cop not copyrighted, but plagiarism. Plagiarized, yeah. Yep, plagiarism checker. All right. What did you have, Terry? I said to memorize the NCO Creed. I didn't memorize it before I got there. It sounds so small, but it really was important because uh, there was some drama between classrooms that people didn't know the creed. And so I think it was like week two. Um, they said if we were in formation and they could tell we didn't know the creed that we were going to get counselings, which in turn would take you off the commandant's list. So it's just so, so small that can help you and not be as stressful. But yeah. 
All right. Well, thank you very much for, for both joining me. Any last comments before we sign off? Nope. Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for both joining me and uh,